our longest trusted English newspaper since 1898. Now available digitally. Computer, order the Manila Times Digital Edition. Subscribed. Get the Manila Times Digital Edition for less than 2 pesos and 50 centavos per day when you sign up for one year. The Manila Times, new source of choice, trusted since 1898. Greetings! Thank you for lending an ear to the voice of the Times for Saturday, June 25, 2022. For today's editorial, Philippines turning its back on transparency in extractive industries. The decision earlier this week by outgoing Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez III to abruptly withdraw the Philippines from the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative or EITI is completely unacceptable. It should be rescinded immediately, if not by him, then by Finance Secretary Designate Benjamin Diokno when he assumes the post on June 30. Dominguez, who chairs the Philippines' EITI multi-sector group that manages compliance with the Global Standards Framework, informed the EITI chairperson Helen Park of the withdrawal in a letter dated June 20. The EITI is a global initiative comprising more than 50 countries with significant extractive industries, mining, oil, and gas, and provides a common set of standards for transparency and accountability in these industries. Under the initiative, mining and petroleum companies in EITI countries are obliged to publicly disclose data on taxes royalties and other payments they make to the government and their host communities. In addition, the EITI also prescribes standards and best practices for stakeholder engagement and informed consent of the affected public and extractive activities. The Philippines joined the EITI in 2013 and undergoes a validation process every three years. The last was in 2019 and another for 2022 was pending, at least until Dominguez's decision to drop out. According to the EITI website, the Philippines is classified as making moderate and meaningful progress in the 2019 validation report. The country was given generally good remarks, with some identified issues and stakeholder engagement being noted as in the process of being addressed. In his letter, Dominguez complained that the Philippines has no confidence in the ability of the EITI to undertake an impartial, transparent, and evidence-based validation process adding that the EITI has validation systems that are unduly subjective, biased, and unfair. The letter further accused the EITI board of unfair treatment and using irrelevant metrics, as well as relying on unvalidated reports in assessing the status of civic space in the extractive sector. Dominguez said that the Department of Finances repeatedly asked the EITI for more details on alleged issues pertaining to civic space so that these could be addressed, but that the EITI had not provided the requested information. The EITI does not observe due process for actions it has imposed on the Philippines, Dominguez said, adding rather churlishly. We refuse to be taken hostage by unverified allegations from foreigners and people who have no mandate from the electorate. This is quite an about face for Dominguez, who less than a year ago at the July 29, 2021 Philippines EITI National Conference had this to say. Regulation must ensure balance between economic and environmental concerns to realize the best outcome for our people. The EITI helps in achieving that balance by providing fair and accurate data about the extractive industry. It is a source of credible information to inform policy makers on the appropriate fiscal regime for mining and helps ensure that the extraction of our natural resources will substantially contribute to the sustainable development of the nation. The data for the 2022 validation report is not yet available from the EITI, and so we would allow 
that there may be something in it with which the government could have a valid disagreement. However, if that presumed issue is so severe as to warrant the Philippines withdrawal from the EITI, then Dominguez owes us a more detailed explanation than a jingoistic snipe about unverified allegations from foreigners. Exiting the EITI is a serious matter one that will have significant consequences for the Philippines standing as a secure investment destination. Such is a drastic move demands a clear cost. And because it is such a drastic move, even if it is justifiable, it is not a decision the outgoing DOF chief should be making a week before his successor takes over. It is a significant policy matter and thus the decision should be left to the incoming administration, though Dominguez can certainly offer his advice. As it stands, he has unnecessarily tied the next government's hands with a decision that it may not have made after studying the matter itself. That is disappointingly unprofessional from a finance secretary who has otherwise performed admirably for the past six years. And that's the editorial for Saturday, June 25, 2022. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram and listen to the Voice of the Times.